Hello everyone, this video I will show you our new product. Uh, this we called KC868 AIO. That means all in one. This is all in one resource of the ESP32. So this controller is the most powerful ESP32 board. We have integrated the analog input, analog output, and the digital input and the digital output all in one this box. And this box we have designed with this metal box, just as similar as the H32B Pro and the KC868 server. So this is very stable and the beautiful black box. And this box also will support the Home Assistant by the ESP Home. And also you can write your own code about the Arduino code to drive away all this hardware resource. And in this video, I will show you this PCB design details, the hardware details, and how it works with the Home Assistant and with the Arduino IDE. Okay, let's begin. Okay, let's look at this is KC868 AIO. So this is a metal box and the black color. You can see uh, this is a metal and this is for many input channel and the Ethernet part. And this box also support install on your DIN reel and this is a Wi-Fi antenna or 4G module antenna you can install from this hole and also you can install from this side also have many holes for you to use and if you have installed into your power distribution box you can see here that can support install on the DIN reel just like this this will be installed on your power distribution box Okay, uh, this is the box, and uh, let's look at the PCB board. We will easy to see the hardware details. Uh, this is the box. Open this box, you will see this PCB board. Uh, so you can see that is the AIO, and in front, and this is the back, and this is the back side. And we can remove this board. So you can see here, there are many uh, digital input. There are totally have 58 digital input. And uh, analog output, uh, 16 channel analog output. And 19 channel analog input. And also you can see there are many different terminal on this side. And this is for the output. That is most fit output. Totally have 32 channel output. And this you can see that is for DC power supply. So this board will support 12 or 24 volt. Uh, you can see here that is DC power supply. And these two GPIOs are for sensor, for temperature sensor, humidity sensor, uh, integrated home assistant by ESP Home. And this is IS485 communication cable A and B. And this is a 3 volt for power supply for the sensor, such as DS18B20 temperature sensor. And this is two button that for ESP32 reset and for GPIO0 uh, defined by yourself. And this is type C uh, USB for download and monitoring and debug for your board. And this board was also designed by the ESP32 module. But this, that will have IPX socket, so you can extend your Wi-Fi antenna from this socket. And this board is for analog in output. That is for 16-channel analog output. This that is LD indicate. So if you want to use analog in output, you just connect this module uh, to this socket. Actually, this board will include uh, with this uh, black board. And this is option uh, for the module. So let's let's look at this clearly. Uh, so this is for I square C um, RTC module. And uh, here we can see that is the socket. Also is removable. The output is removable. And uh, all this input also is removable. So you can see, I can remove this socket and this not without screw so you can connect with your one uh, just use this this way to fix so you can see we have designed this board uh, you can use by the two different sockets you can see here 
that is without school, and this is by the school. So if you want to uh, use this type of socket, so you can remove it. You can see uh, this is school version. So also you can connect with it. Just the uh, default configuration, we, we will use this, this socket. OK, let's look at our form. So this have AIO. So you can see here that have many results of the AIO board. And here you can see the hardware details from the datasheet PDF. You can see here just this file. That is Kinkoni AIO that all in one board. So you can see the ESP32 and different module, different module, and the hardware details. There are so many different dry contact input. 36 channel and also you can see there are two buttons uh, for you to use you can define your function by your code or by your setting and this is analog output that is DC 0 to 10 volt and the analog input uh, both the port 0 to 5 sensors and 4 to 20 milliampere sensors so I think almost support everything type of the sensor and uh, uh, this is the output. The output you can see that is the most fit output 32 channel. So you can work with the 12 DC or 24 DC and with this extend relay module case 868 E16. So you can control many different DC load uh, such as the sign and the door lock and the void and some different contact just the DC load so you can connect directly. And this is the hardware. And also we can see uh, this is our PCB design that is all, all in one. We have designed this, the newest is 1.4 version because we have designed this board up, it takes about six months. So have many different board have feature. And at last we have successful at the 1.4. So you can see we can work with this board in, in 3D and this is in front of the board. We can see this in front and this back front. Okay, and we can change to 2D mode. And this is the hardware. And the hardware, you can see here the pin define. The, every pin of the ESP32, how to use and how to configure, you can, uh, from these files, you can see there are every chip and I square C for extend the GPUs and analog extend all have at here. Okay, now let's look at how to integrate to the home assistant. You can see this is our home assistant YAML file. So this is the home assistant I have integrated. Uh, you can see the output analog and analog input and digital input and output and the DS18 B20 temperature sensor. Now let's look at this AIO board integrated to home assistant. I have connect with this terminal and with this power supply, a 12 volt will connect it. And this is temperature sensor, DS18 B20. I have connect with the GPIO. So I can remove this socket and connect with the new socket I have connect with one. So every eight channel output, there are VIN that for power supply. Because we designed for independently, so you can let every eight channel have a different watt of the VIN. So maybe this you have connected 12 watt, and this you we have connected 24 watt. So the different eight channel will output a different voltage of the power. So you can see here, I, now I have just a test with the 12 volts. So I have connected all this V in together. And this is the power supply, and this is the temperature sensor. Okay, and we have used the Ethernet cable to connect with it. And before I power on, I will open this metal box, and I will let you see how it works. We can open this box. Because I have installed all the modules, uh, you can see here the 4G module, 
that have installed the SIM card at here so that you can use the GPS or use the short message uh, for remote control your output or read the sensor state that is output and this is LED indicate for 32 channel output this is 16 channel output that is for the LED indicate I have 16 channel LED indicate for different value and this is the D RTC module that is DS32 and 31 so this you if you have installed the battery so you can save the clock of the system because the board will send by the airplane so we can't install the battery in, on this socket okay now you can see this is hardware details we will begin power on and you can see power on the red LED is on the LED is on LED is on okay let's look at the home assistant you can see here uh, that is the AIO I have created actually you just click the ESP home so you can very easily to integrate to Home Assistant by ESP Home and there are many many ESP32 King Connect board so I can uh, see that is AIO so you just edit this AIO and copy this config YAML file from our King Connect form so just this file uh, this file you can see the content so you just copy and paste is very easy and maybe you need to change your static IP address but I have used uh, if you have used uh, DHCP that will be good uh, this is static IP address of my board so you just uh, install and uh, connect to USB cable and uh, to your Raspberry Pi or to your KC868 server that our Raspberry Pi uh, server uh, just download by USB cable is very easy and after complete, uh, you can see there are our dashboard I have created in uh, 14th floor. You can see that is digital output, uh, 32 channel output, but this they have uh, LDD7 and LDD8. Uh, just there are two, there are two LDs we have designed for you to use uh, for some different functions. So you can see if I have turned on all 32 channel. You can see here and here. So this is output 1 to 32 channel. And you can see here that D7 and D8. So you can see here. I can turn on and turn off. So this is just an LD. So there are two LD for you to use. So maybe you have some different functions you can define that will be easy to see the LED indicate from outside the box. So you can see here. And this is the DS18B20 temperature sensor. So you can see here uh, just uh, the temperature. And you can change this temperature sensor to your uh, humidity sensor or other one wire sensors. Just it's up to you. So this can set the update time so I have set about 16 uh, seconds so this will be long and uh, here you can see that is analog input uh, this is all analog input we, we can see here uh, this PDF file you can see uh, this is analog input from this 1 to 8 and 9 to 6 because uh, this is for the other to 5 volt and this 9 until 16 channel is for 4 to 20 milliampere so it's, it's used for different sensors so you can see if I have tested uh, this is analog 1 so this is analog 1 uh, you can see now I just uh, test you can see this is 3 volts at here I just uh, shot for this and you can see uh, the voltage is changed uh, this is channel 1 this is channel 1 so you can connect with the different sensors to monitor the date because you need to configure the ESP home uh, for the different range uh, so this you can see AI 1 to AI 16 but you can see there are 17, 18 and 19 because this is 3 GPLs from this ESP 32 directly and uh, this 16 channel analog that have a extended ship so 
these have all have connected the analog input one. Because you can see, uh, this is a chip. It is an I square C chip will let you analog input one and external to sixteen channel. So this chip, the function makes the ESP32 have so many different analog input. Okay, uh, this you can see that is the analog input. You can also set the update time. You can see here that is analog input, different analog input, just the update interval. interval. You can set this time. This I have set to the five seconds, you can set to other seconds. So this is for analog input. And here you can see that is the analog output that use for the dimmer or your LD strip. So you can see have 16 channel analog output. If you can turn on, you can see here as uh, LD indicate, you will see that is become on is slowly. And when when I turn off, uh, you can see that is off. Let's look at clearly. You can see here that is 16 channel analog output. So the different voltage, the LED will have different light. So you can see I can turn on all 16 channel. That will be on just slowly. And turn off, that will be off. So if you can see, I can turn on this first dimmer. You can see I can change 50%. You can see uh, the LED. Let let clearly. You can see I can change to 100%. That will be very light and reduce, reduce, and reduce. You can see the LED will be change the brightness. So every channel, you can use the dimmer. Uh, you can see this is number two and number two. And this is 100%. And so you can see here. You can see here the PDF file. That is the analog output. Uh, this socket, uh, just this socket is analog output. So if you turn on the channel 1 and the channel 2 to 100%, so these two terminal will output a DC time volt. If you turn off this LED, you can see if I can turn off and turn off. So this terminal will output zero volt. So this will be different brightness will have the different voltage output. So this is just the analog output. And then let's look at this digital input. So you can see here this digital input one and until digital 56, Robert also have 57 and uh, 59, uh, 58. So the, until this is 56, Robert, there are two buttons. There are two buttons. That is 57 and 58. So you can see, if I can shoot for this terminal, uh, this is the ground, and this is channel 1, so let's look at this home assistant. You can see here, I have shot for this. Uh, this is channel one. You can see that will be on, that is triangle. And the shot for this with ground, uh, that is input two, is shot. So you can see here, we can see the last uh, digital input, S3 and S4. So you can press this button, you can see uh, this S1, S3. When I press this button, that will be on. And this S4 also is on and off uh, by this button. So you can define these two buttons just a short way uh, for you to create some automation. And these two LEDs and these two switches can use by yourself in Home Assistant. Okay, this we have designed these two buttons and two LED for you to use. And this is the Home Assistant dashboard. Okay, uh, let's look at the form.
you can see not only the Home Assistant is supported by this AIO, but also we can use this AIO board for Arduino IDE very easily. You can see here we have prepared some Arduino demo source code uh, for different hardware resources, such as you can use it for the digital input. So this how to use the digital input, read the sensor states, and how to constrain this output for on and off. So all have this Arduino IDE uh, source code. You just download this code, you can see this code. You can just download and direct it to use. That is the zip file, have include the INO file. So you can easily use any resource in your Arduino IDE. Okay, this is how to use this AIO board and integrate to your home assistant and make your home automation DIY. Thanks for watching.